Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Novel. This edition Stop Stories. Ectel to advance in bridging the digital divide under the chairmanship of Honorable Stevenson King. 23% of St. Lucia's population is now vaccinated against COVID-19 as vaccination sites expand. And the Schwazel Saltibus Constituency Council mandated to pursue development in conjunction with residents. The Eastern Caribbean Telecommunications Authority, ECTEL, on the 28th of October 2021, held its 42nd meeting of the Council of Ministers. The incoming chairman is St. Lucia's Senior Minister and Minister for Infrastructure, Ports, Transport, Physical Development and Urban Renewal, Honorable Stevenson King. Minister King on Thursday, 4th November, provided an overview of the major outcomes of the 42nd meeting of the Council of Ministers. They include the deliberation and approval of the budget to fund the work of ECTEL and the National Telecommunications Regulatory Commissions, NTRCs, in all five member states. ECTEL has recommended the new EC bill to member states, and to date, the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis has passed the EC Act though it is not yet in force. In the other member states, the EC bill is under active consideration at the level of cabinet of ministers. In St. Lucia, the Department of Telecommunications in the Ministry of Infrastructure, Ports, Transport, Physical Development and Urban Renewal is in communication with the Attorney General's chambers to prepare the EC bill for a formal presentation to be made to the Cabinet of Ministers for onward transmission to the Parliament of St. Lucia. Once the Cabinet of Ministers has given its approval, it is expected that the EC bill will be prepared for presentation. The COVID-19 pandemic has forced the world into a state of increased reliance on data, mobile devices and computers to facilitate remote work and online learning, among other tasks. The pandemic also exposed the inequity in accessibility to broadband services by consumers in the ECTEL member states, something that ECTEL has taken note of and will be working to address. As schools moved to online classes learning, it became clear that there was a sub substantial digital divide among students across the ECTEL member states. For some students, broadband was not available where they lived or broadband was not affordable, or the quality of service was not acceptable. In response, a number of universal service fund projects have been implemented to provide broadband access to students affected by the pandemic. These include build out of a fiber network to serve customers with no access to fixed broadband service on the East Coast in the Commonwealth of Dominica. Providing devices and subsidized access to mobile broadband to 1,800 students and fixed broadband to 700 households with students in St. Kitts and Nevis. Three, providing access, rather, providing 4,000 electronic devices and 4,000 MIFIs to students in St. Lucia. And finally, connecting more than 340 house homes rather, with broadband and providing 1,000 students with a tablet and internet access in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The chairman noted that the revelations have made ECTEL's role as a regional regulatory body for electronic communications even more significant as the 21-year-old Telecommunications Act and regulations are no longer fit for purpose in this new paradigm. He also highlighted the entity's achievements thus far. Over the past 21 years, sector regulation has delivered several wins to consumers, including increased fixed and mobile broadband penetration, significant reductions in calling rates, increased fixed broadband speeds, introduction of new technologies such as 4G, and more recently, increased customer choice with the introduction of mobile number portability in 2019. The electronic communications sector 
has also contributed significantly to economic growth in the five ECTEL member states. In the past five years, service providers have invested an average of $136 million annually across the ECTEL member states while providing full employment for more than 780 people. The chairmanship is rotated annually, offering each member state the opportunity to serve as ECTEL's head of the Council of Ministers. ECTEL is made up of three components, a Council of Ministers, a Regional Directorate, and a National Telecommunications Regulatory Commission in each of its five member states, namely the Commonwealth of Dominica, Grenada, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Lucia, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The ministry, through its national vaccination program, has introduced a Pfizer booster dose, particularly for the most at-risk population group, that is people 65 years and older, those living with underlying medical conditions, and frontline workers. Assistant Principal Nursing Officer and Immunization Manager Tekla Jabatiste says the booster shot is critical with the advent of the Delta variant. St. Lucia has confirmed 31 cases of the Delta variant. What exactly is a booster and why is it highly recommended for at-risk groups? It is an additional dose administered to a vaccinated population that has completed a primary vaccination series. The purpose of the booster is to increase the body's immune response to COVID-19, especially in the wake of the Delta variant. The COVID-19 vaccine booster dose will help extend the protection you gained from your first two doses and give you longer-term protection against getting seriously ill from COVID-19. People 65 years and older should get a booster. The risk of severe illness from COVID-19 increases with age and can also increase for adults of any age with underlying medical conditions. While the booster dose is recommended for the high-risk population, any person who had their two doses and require a booster dose can come forward for the booster dose. Vaccine uptake has been steady with the ministry, now facilitating greater public access to vaccination sites. As of Tuesday, November 2, 2021, administered a total of 51,539 first doses, 43,265 second doses and 336 booster doses of the COVID-19 vaccine. 23.3% of the population being fully vaccinated against COVID-19. The vaccination uptake trend notes the highest uptake in the 24 to 49 years age group, followed by those 50 years and older. We continue to encourage younger persons to get vaccinated because COVID-19 can affect anyone regardless of age. As part of the reviewed national plan, the Ministry of Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs has undertaken a two-week accelerated COVID-19 vaccination drive, which commenced on Monday, October 25, 2021, making COVID-19 vaccines more available and accessible to the public. Both the AstraZeneca and Pfizer vaccines are available at wellness centers and vaccination sites. The Ministry of Health is urging all St. Lucians to take this personal responsibility to protect themselves and loved ones. Meanwhile, while downward trends in COVID-19 cases and deaths continue across much of the Americas for the eighth consecutive week, However, Pan American Health Organization's Assistant Director, Jabas Barbosa, warns that progress in our region is not a reason to become complacent or discontinue the public health measures that keep us safe. The Assistant Director reported that thanks to strong immunization systems in the region, 1.2 billion doses of COVID-19 vaccines have been administered and 46% of the overall population are now fully vaccinated. At least 32 countries in the region have already reached the WHO's target of 40% vaccination coverage by the end of 2021, and several more are on track. However, many continue to face delays and coverage in Haiti, 
Nicaragua, Jamaica, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and Guatemala remains below 20%. Barbados continues to report its highest number of COVID-related infections and deaths since the start of the pandemic. And there are concerning shortages of hospital capacity in the Dominican Republic and Trinidad and Tobago. The progress in our region is not a reason to become complacent or discontinue the public health measures that help keep us safe. Quite the opposite. The decline in cases and deaths shows that our approach is working, and it is critical for all of us to stay the course until everyone is vaccinated and protected from the virus. To address vaccine inequity, allocations of vaccines from COVAX are expected to accelerate in the coming weeks. The COVAX facility, with the support of PAHO's revolving fund, has already delivered 64.3 million doses to the region. The Shuazel Saltibus Constituency Council has been mandated to pursue development in conjunction with residents. Hamadi Mark explains. The Shuazel Constituency Council saw the installment of new councillors to the local governing body. The council formerly named the Shuazel Village Council now holds the responsibility of governing and the development of the Shuazel Village and Saltibus community. Parliamentary representative for Shuazel Saltibus addressing the newly installed councillors urged them to approach their positions on the council with due seriousness and preparedness by familiarizing themselves with the Constituency Council Act. And your foremost purpose as councillors and Shuazelians is to maintain a social conscience and serve that conscience. It should never, never just be warming a seat, never be warming a seat at council meetings and collecting a stipend. You must have the passion to put your community first and to have an intimate awareness of where vulnerability exists. And when I speak of vulnerability, I do not only speak of residents, but I also speak of residents, T and C. A priority for all councillors and the council should always be to unite Shuzelians. Permanent Secretary in the Department of Housing and Local Government, Dr. Cordelia Lean Ambrose, encouraged councillors to engage in consultation with the various sectors in the constituency as they work towards the development of Shuzel Saltibus. Suzel Saltibus, a constituency renowned for its culture, heritage, resources, and in particular, the outstanding and unique craft which is produced right here, once tapped into, will fulfill its optimum potential. We urge you additionally to create opportunities that will unify the various communities, embrace the farmers, Shrozel is known for its sweet potatoes, among other agricultural produce. Embrace the fishers, embrace the crafters. They are all part of the network that will work collectively towards the success of this constituency. John Preville was installed as chairperson of the constituency council and Philomena Laffey as deputy chair. From the Government Information Service, Hilmedi Mark reporting. This is NTN Nightly. Primus Hutchinson is up next. Stay with us. The Department of Finance has introduced the Electronic Government Procurement System, EGP. The EGP system has many benefits for stakeholders involved in government procurement. And government seeks to adopt a strategic approach to its purchasing process. Electronic government procurement improves efficiency of procurement and enhances data capture. The EGP is innovative and will automate the sequence from notification, receiving and evaluation of submissions to final contract award. It improves communication between vendors and the government agencies, provides greater transparency and builds confidence in the vendor community through increased access to information. To participate, Vendors, suppliers, and contractors must register on the electronic government procurement platform. EGP, improving efficiency and transparency in the acquisition of goods, works, and services.
Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle a Quayol. Monsieur Ta Janel, Monsieur Madame, Department qui n'est pas responsable pour information à gouvernement, c'est le CIS, c'est le GIS, à ce moment-là, la télévision nationale pour la NTN, qui a présenté une nouvelle à Quayol, présenté au Primus Hutchinson. Le ministère des Affaires Construction, Travaux, Affaires Pro, Transportation, qui a informé le public que la deuxième phase du bâtissement de pont col de sac a commencé. La deuxième phase de travail, c'est pour bâtir pour un même comme la fondation a fini complètement. Pour ça, fait, ce travail a déjà placé diverses nécessités et pour placer divers matériaux qui méritent pour finir le bâtissement pour ça. Le travail a sur le finissement de la fondation, c'était en mi-temps du mois d'octobre 2021. Et le finissement total, c'était plus que 40%. Le projet pour le de sac là, a gardé pour adresser la situation de l'eau qui a dévalisé le pays sérieusement et en particulier la vallée de son col de sac. Le règlement des finances est fait par le gouvernement et le gouvernement Japon à l'Agence des coopérations internationales Japon. Ça a fait un mois d'août, l'Agence des coopérations Japon est responsable pour supporter le projet et puis consultant et compagnie qui a conduit le bâtiment. Le travail à ce bâtiment pour la supposé fini complètement en 21 mois pour depuis le temps commencé et ça c'était le 1er mars 2021. Le département des ministères de travaux a continué pour vêtir et conseiller les chauffeurs l'autopassager pour utiliser ces routes-là qui sont en place à ce grand chemin millénium pour bâtir et débâtir les passagers. Et pour y avoir bout de service à côté de chemin millénium et de col de sac qui a branché, il y a aussi commandé les passagers pour inspirer ces l'autopassager ça là en les bail là en place pour ça c'est en place là ils mettent pour ça selon le département euh, malgré tous ces conseils ça là et qu'avait-il ce chauffeur l'auto ou pas continuer action ça là il pas encore de bout et que cette mois la tenir un accident par un autopassager à l'autopassager le dit le 1er novembre le département travaux qui travaille près et puis les officiers de police pour voir que tout l'autopassager respecté les cultivateurs, ça c'est les farmers, encore j'ai trouvé conseil pour préserver les forêts pays. Ce ministre des Affaires agricoles, pêche les forêts et développement des communes, honorable Alfred Prosper, qui fait appel à cela. Selon le ministre Prosper, les farmers ni pour comprendre de l'eau c'est la vie. Et plus ils continuent de détruire les forêts, c'est plus ils ont réduit à subir sous l'eau. Et faire pour ça là, principalement, comme là, on a en pile attention à ce euh, changement de climat au lieu de la terre à présent. Mais les agricoles là, faire ces femmes là comprendre que si on continue pour dévaliser les forêts tout de suite, c'est la rivière qui est sec et que ça y seulement, c'est Si vous faites ça, vous avez un corps dans la manière côté, même là, on vient ça, vous regardez pas les poupées de gloire, il n'y a pas qu'à une gloire encore, la gloire qui est tout petit, il disparaît. Et c'est terre qui est là. Je veux dire que ça, actuellement, ça a chassé l'autre pays qui dévalise les forêts, dévalise la forêt pour pou développer, faire des cailles, mettre des villes avec des barres comme ça. Il a planté ces côtés de vie. Parce que vous voyez, ça a créé le climat de la La forêt, c'est celle qui est la plus importante pour adresser et bien réguler le climat de la Donc, je veux dire que c'est si tout est femme noire et tout le monde est ici pour protéger la forêt. Protéger la forêt nous, parce que ça c'est la vie nous. Si madame nous a continué et puis ministre des Affaires santé et a fait les plus grands citoyens, on a besoin de partis concernant WEG et protocole nouveau pour le mois de novembre 2021. Aujourd'hui, le ministre a commencé et puis ses divers cabarets et bien bas côté client cassable pour boire boire ça. Si on est bas avec on est en licence pour 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 vendre homme on va pour vendre liquor quand je dis à présent où ça opère depuis à 10h du matin jusqu'à temps où fermé mais nous quoi encourager nous voulons gens qui vacciner finir en business ou parce que encore nous pas voulez covid 19 là si mais tout partout en ces communes comme ça nous quoi encourager monde qui n'y bat pour vacciner avec pour encourager pour Inviter les gens qui vaccinent pour venir à Didambao. 
ou ça aller en restaurant avec um, gagner manger en restaurant gens qui vacciné ces restaurants ça ouvert avec vendre manger avec bail comme ça si ou pas ni ces qualités conditions ça là ou ça fait ça yo ka crier grab and go ça veut dire ou ça fait manger avec moun ça vinn gagner manger avec aller et puis ou pas ça acide dans dans restaurant ou pas vacciné pour manger manger ça là aussi nous ka dit l'hôtel avec moun qui a uh, peut-être ni Airbnb di fan bagay comme ça depuis moun vacciné ou ça qui te se moun ça la vini à l'hôtel ou ou ben ça qui te se moun ça la vini établissement Et monsieur madame ça c'est côté nous en trois bouts nouvelles là nous allons continuer puis ministre là sur l'autre programme moi quand monsieur autant pour regarder moi qu'avoir une invitation pour venir puis moi encore c'est dire conserver la vie dans les prochaines trois autres nouvelles à quoi à présent moi qu'a vie pour cette chaîne Merci Apple Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Novell.